everybody! In today's video, I'm going to show you some of my favorite art books, the books that have been with me along my art journey. They've taught me a lot, they've inspired me, and now I'm going to share them with you. Welcome to my channel, Shelly J. Cox. Come along with me on my art journey. So one of the first art books that I ever got was by John Howard Sandon, Painting the Head in Oil. <laughs> Uh, it looks a little dated, but the information in the book is not. I mean, how many ways can you paint a head? Well, probably a lot, but the basics are not dated, really. This book came out in 1976, so that's pretty cool. And what were some of the interesting things that were in this book? This book was really good in having me do some of my first color study charts and learning really uh, how to paint skin tones, how to mix skin tones, learning what colors help to take away some of the saturation of skin tones. So that was really helpful in this book. He went over um, painting a la prima versus painting in direct. There was a lot of how to start your portraits. He would break down the head, painting the eyes. These were really quick, quick portrait studies. But yeah, John Howard Sandin, painting the head in oils. I think I found this at a garage sale. So I just wanted to say thank you to everybody that's subscribed. And if you're a true art lover and you wanna follow me and come along with me on this art journey, uh, you wanna hit subscribe. So it's a pandemic as you guys know, and I have not been able to go to any artist workshops sadly, but once this all settles and the workshops start back again, I'm gonna be going to workshops and coming back and I'll make videos that explain and share with you guys all the stuff that I've learned. So come with me, go on this art journey, hit the subscribe button, hit the likes button if you're getting some value out of the videos and it'll help support my channel and I really appreciate you guys so so much. Thank you to everyone that's already subscribed and let's keep doing this. Thanks guys! So another John Howard Sandin book, Face to Face with Greatness. Now, this book was more about John Howard Sandin's journey from illustrator to becoming a portrait artist. And that was really interesting to see someone else's journey, especially someone as accomplished as John Howard Sandin. I mean, he's really the top portrait painter of our time right now, and he's highly sought after. I mean, he's painted presidents, senators, heads of industry, I mean, you name it, he's painted them. Basically, to have John Howard Sandin paint your portrait today it would cost a pretty penny. You can find him, I believe, at Portrait Inc. Portraits Inc. in New York City. But you can see how accomplished he is. I mean, heads of industry, it goes on and on, giants in business. And it talks about how he did the sittings with these really important, powerful people and got the work done. I mean, it's probably pretty hard to get someone this busy to sit for you. And I, John Howard Sandin prefers to paint from life, but of course he does incorporate some use of photos in his process. I mean, he even went to Africa to paint an African king. I mean, how amazing is that? He tells you the process that he went through getting that done. So that's a really good book, Face to Face with Greatness. It's very inspiring to me. So I found another John Howard, John Howard Sandin book, Portraits from Life in 29 Steps. <laughs> I think I just like collecting his art, really, but reading the information is extremely helpful. He's got his principles in here. I mean, these are very classical portrait techniques that he explains. It's great to know the classic techniques so that you can branch out from that and become a little more uh, contemporary. And again, it helped me really 
understand some of the skin tones and the mixing and how to get them from scratch, basically. So I recommend, yeah, there's the planes of the head, talked about values. I mean, he goes through all of the basics that you need with portrait painting. Portraits from life. John Howard Sandin. Successful portrait painting. Yes, another one from John Howard Sandin. I guess you could say I am a fan. So this one came out uh, in the 70s as well. But again, the information's pretty applicable even today in 2020. Although it doesn't talk about painting portraits in a pandemic, that's probably a whole new book or something, right? But it does outline a lot of the process, the equipment that he uses, even down to like contracts and um, making sure that you have the right paperwork to get your portrait done, collecting deposits, final payments, delivery, framing, all that. And uh, he gives you some good tips on photographing your portrait reference and how that he works with the photographs. Sometimes he paints a study while he's there and then he'll go back to his studio, put the photograph in Photoshop, make some edits. He talks about the uh, approval process along the way, using Photoshop to correct or change things in the portrait. He even uh, used Photoshop one time to show different backgrounds to his client. So I think he gave him like four choices and eventually they agreed on a background that way. So pretty cool. Nice to see even back then people using technology to get their portraiture done. So that was interesting. Successful portrait painting. That was definitely a uh, good information. So um, I went to the Art Institute of Fort Lauderdale. It was quite a long time ago. But a couple of books that I had from my anatomy and life drawing classes I still have with me today. So one of them is How to Draw Heads and Portraits. So there's, I'll put a link in the description above. There's some information in this book that I talk about um, that compares the features of children's head versus adult heads. That's what some of the information is in this book. Uh, really good information as far as understanding the entire figure and how it compares men and women. And then it talks about how the head should be lined up, the features should be lined up. So construction of the human head. And they get into quite a lot of detail. And then they talk about how the different angles can be depicted. And it gives you, there's a lot of uh, drawings that you can practice. I really liked the information here as far as comparing the children's head to adults head and then he even talks about elderly people compared to regular features and there's a lot of the information there that will help you. So again a really good uh, book. It was written a long time ago but the information is still applicable today. I'll put a link to this exact book in my description so if you want to grab it I think it's like a couple bucks on Amazon worth every penny. So this was my teacher Angelo Di Vincenza and the hobby artist this was required for us to have in our life drawing class but the information is still applicable and it just breaks down going through drawing setting up your head making the appropriate tick marks so that you can start mapping out the face. Probably should have shown you that forward instead of backwards. It talks about shadowing and values, all the basic stuff. And there's a really interesting quote in the beginning. It says, talent is not necessary. Anyone can learn to draw, providing they are willing to practice. But practice alone is insufficient. A knowledge of mechanical procedure is required. This book is designed to help the beginner get acquainted with the method of correct procedure. Only basic principles are featured in order to let the individual expression develop along with the practice. That is so key. 
So you want to develop the skills, but you also want to leave room for your individual creativity to shine through. And he was a really interesting teacher. I mean, he was quite old when we had that class, but so much wisdom from this uh, gentleman. And it was really inspiring. And the courses that I was taking were more commercial art based. And he gave me my first taste of fine art and life drawing and really understanding anatomy and it just inspired me to go on and learn more and become the portrait slash figure painter that I am today. Thank you, Angelo DiVincenza. So the other book that I highly recommend, and you'll see a link to this book, Alla Prima, Everything You Need to Know About Painting and More by Richard Schmidt. This book has really helped improve my painting. My artwork has become more alive and less stiff. I've, breaking, I've broken away from being so rigid with my outlines, making just becoming more painterly and really letting the brush strokes sing, letting the brush strokes become a major part of the painting. I mean, I want to see these brush strokes. And that's what I learned from Richard. I mean, he's just amazing. He's an amazing painter in his own right. I mean, look at this. Just beautiful and so painterly. And that was just a quick study. If you want to learn more about Richard Schmidt, look him up online. What an accomplished, amazing portrait artist. But he is the father of Selective Start Painting which if you've seen any of my videos, you know I am a big fan of Selective Start Painting. And this book is where you're gonna learn that. And he'll show you how to do the underpainting if you wanna go that route, and how to just jump in and go right into the painting process with the Selective Start method. So yeah, here's a picture of Richard Smith. What a great guy. So I was introduced to this book by my mentor, Tina Garrett. Richard Schmidt, Alla Prima, everything I know about painting and more. So, since I didn't have a formal education for my painting, I'm pretty much self-taught. I've watched videos, I've attended workshops, I read, I try to learn as much as I can from other artists on YouTube, and it's all brought me to where I am today. And if you can't get a formal fine art education, which, gosh, it wasn't even that long ago, where there really wasn't anywhere to get a formal fine art portraiture, figurative painting type education in the States. I mean, you really had to travel to Italy or somewhere else, but um, a really cool thing to do. So those type of, um, school situations are basically ateliers and they take you through quite a specific uh, process it's about a three to four year program you can do them a little quicker uh, if you really work hard but they start you at a basic level like with sketching they don't even let you touch paint for the first year i've i've read and uh, you just start building on the basics and moving up working from charcoal into black and white paint and then you'll start painting uh, a little bit of color and then you work into full color but there's each of the steps in these atelier books that i have so i like to read these and we even talked about it, it gets crazy into like mixing your own mediums and paints and stuff that's way too involved for me i just want to go to the art store buy some paint get my little canvas and go to town. So there's a couple of atelier books. So Classical Painting Atelier by Juliet Aristides. This was a really good book. And again, it's talking about those, uh, this one's by Suzanne Brooker, Portrait Painting Atelier, Old Master Techniques and Contemporary Applications. So these two, if you take these two books and you go through them step by step, you will basically provide yourself with a classical atelier type education. This is a great book to have on hand, Anatomy for Artists. It really helps if you're stuck trying to paint a hand or a foot or ear or something like that, or you just wanna see anatomy in different positions. I mean, it really helps you to get a good understanding of the musculature. Musculature, mus musculature.
musculature. Musculature. <laughs> so it talks about everything down to the bones, the head, the everything. I mean, there's great, 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 great images to help you with anatomy. Highly recommend it. This one's by Sarah Simblet. And then some books for inspiration. The International Realism book. This is put out by the Arc Salon. If you've seen some of my master copy videos, I use them a lot for the reference material. They have great um, archives for the old master reference material. But this is a really great book to see the contemporary artists of our time. These are the tops in our fields of figurative painting and you can see how they are making masterpieces and you can be inspired by it and hopefully one day see your art in a book like this. Lots of great pieces. My uh, mentor Tina Garrett is in the book. Here's her picture. This painting's amazing. This I have trouble saying this. Cicerone by Tina Garrett. But yeah, international realism. Lots of inspiration. Now this is a great book if you love Rembrandt. I just love the beauty of this old style book. This book was given to me by my father-in-law. He too is an artist, great pencils. He's passed away not too long ago, so I really treasure this book. But it's it's got great images of things that Rembrandt has painted, some of his self-portraits. And it just talks about his uh, journey and a lot of the paintings and things that he did. So another really good book, if you're like me and you use Photoshop, you gotta have this guy handy. <laughs> now, if I'm stuck on a technique or I need to do something in Photoshop and I can't quite figure it out, I'll go to this book. It's helped me out of quite a few jams. It's made me a much better composite artist. A magazine that has helped inspire me along the way and taught me things, International Artists. I started getting this back in 2010. This was one of my first copies and it's a great magazine. Highly recommend it. Okay, so there's one more book that really inspires me and that is Webster's Dictionary. You may be asking, how is that possible? Well, I like to find a different word in there and interpret the meaning of the word into a painting. Kind of like how I did um, Amphitrite in Greek mythology. I depicted the goddess of the sea, wife to Poseidon, in that painting. So it's always cool to find a word that I wasn't familiar with and then paint what I think it looks like. Another inspirational book Vogue magazine. I know, I can feel you guys rolling your eyes, but I was highly inspired by Vogue since um, we had to take the September Vogue issue as part of our classroom work when I was at the Art Institute, believe it or not, and it was a lot to do with the fashion illustration portion of my education, and so the September issue is the giant issue that has all the fashion in it, but the photographs that are taken by Annie Leibowitz and other amazing uh, photographers really inspire me. So it's a great place to get inspiration without even having to leave your house. Here's a fun thing. So I made a cover for a book, Hedge Fund Grannies. So my artwork made it to the cover. So that was really interesting and a fun experience. <laughs> so, that is it for my books. I hope that inspired you. I hope you found some value out of that. And if you want to grab some of those books that I really recommend, like Ala Prima, check it out in the description below. There's a link. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.